I got my fire extinguisher within reach. Welcome back to another Lord Duckman production. Guess who got himself a 1971 squareback? Yeah, that's right, the Duckman did. <laughs> this car, it needs a lot of help. When this thing arrived, after I had gone through it a second time, I realized just how much rust is actually on this thing, and it's kind of a lot. It's currently in a state where it does not run, and that's why we're here today. I want to see if I can get this thing running first. I was told, and I believed, that this thing had a good running engine, and the reason why I believe that is because this car has a history. It came from California all the way here to Pensacola, Florida, under its own power. And it actually won an award, a trophy, in our car show back in 2018 for that. Now, I don't know how long it sat since then. I imagine it's been some amount of time because the brake fluid reservoir was kind of dried out. So unless there's a leak somewhere, it probably evaporated. So it's been sitting a little while. Some of the things like gas pedal was stuck, the brake pedal didn't feel right because no fluid, which makes a lot of sense. But the tires do hold air, have no dry rot, and the engine actually does look pretty good. So let's see what we can get out of this thing today. I got a couple hours before dark. I'm pretty confident that this thing's gonna work as long as she's got a good battery. There's two of them in there, by the way. That's right, there's two batteries in this car. That was quite a surprise. And uh, well, we'll see what we can get out of it. Who's to say? Licky, like, you comment, subscribe. Don't forget to plug the needle to get updates every time I video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. You can also find my wish list there, which gives you spoilers for some of my upcoming projects. If you'd like to help contribute to them, you'll find stuff on the wish list there for it. Thanks so much. We'll be back right after that intro. Before I got into anything back here, I checked the battery, just made sure everything was hooked up properly. There is another battery on this side, and actually, I've already swapped them. That battery, when it was on this side, it was showing like 13.8 volts, and I was, you know, had myself a you know, jackpot moment. <laughs> I figured it would be good. Well, I went and I turned the key, and the lights came on the dashboard, and then slowly faded out. I hooked the charger to it, and it didn't seem to want to come back which is quite a surprise. So I checked all the wiring over there on the regulator, make sure it was all hooked up properly. And it appears to be, everything under here is, well, typical Volkswagen. A little beat, a little old, kind of rat's nasty, but uh, it all looks like it's hooked up properly. So I got the other battery, which surprised me where it was made. Oh, derka derka derka. Its origin is rather interesting there. And uh, we're gonna let it charge. The voltage on it was a little higher than this one. And we'll see what happens in just a second. But that's two batteries. <laughs> if one of them isn't good, then Ruby's gonna be lending hers. We'll see if we can get this thing started. All right. All the battery is charging. I pulled the gas cap off. It gave it a sniff, and uh, it doesn't smell like gas, and it doesn't smell like bad gas. It smells like carburetor cleaner, which is really weird. Really weird. So I don't know what's going on in there. Maybe somebody was pouring something in there trying to get it started or maybe there's some kind of octane booster or something that somebody I'd have no idea Strange whatever it is, but I got a brand new can of gas there and we'll put that in there a gallon or two And we'll just see what happens All right, you might remember in the last video we were chasing the hornets out That's why everything's open right now but Actually, I just finished shooting the other video <laughs> We'll put a couple gallons in here. I mean, I'm not going to put the whole five in there. Just in case there actually is a leak or some other problem. There's no reason in having my good gas, which is not cheap, sit and rot or leak all over the driveway. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I think that's probably about a third of it. That's good. I don't hear anything tinkling out. That's a good sign, right? All right, back here in the engine compartment is our oil filter. Nope, that's wrong. Well, it's an air filter, but technically it's an oil dirtier <laughs> because it's a uh, oil bath filter. So this lid should come off of this thing. There we go. here. Yep, that's still got oil. That's good. All right. I'm leave it turned to the side just a little bit. It gives me the ability to uh, shoot a little into the throttle body there. A little juice. 
see if we can get this thing fired. Because if it smelled like... What a piece of crap. Garbage Altima making all that noise. Anyway, this uh, car, I expected the fuel system to just be dry. Completely dry. If it's smelling like, well, my carburetor cleaner the inside of the gas tank and doesn't smell like bad gas and it's not even a strong smell it's like there's barely anything at all and I'm gonna assume there was not any gas left in this and the tank was dry now I should have something though uh, you know what um, everything in here looks like it's hooked up properly throttle body seems to work we got our oil light distributor cap is on there good and solid just look inside of it for grins yep there's our points Got our rotor. Inside the distributor cap is clean. This is the correct distributor for a Type 3. Ruby's got the wrong one. I put a 034 in there. This one is a little different. It has the little short distributor cap on it. It does have vacuum advance though, which is nice. 009s are garbage, and I don't care what anybody says. I always get a lot of backlash about that. Volkswagen automobile engines never came with a 009. That's strictly for industrial purposes, for engines that run at, you know, same RPM for very long periods of time. Not one that you have to accelerate and then slow down, stop, accelerate again. That doesn't make any sense for a 009 because that's not how they work. They drive like crap, absolute crap. And it may be the only option you have if you have a carburetor or something that doesn't have a vacuum uh, bung to attach your distributor to. Then I guess it's, it's the only thing you got, then you're just going to have to deal with it. But anyway, I digress. This all looks like it the way it's supposed to be. There is a vacuum line here that's not hooked up. Typically there's a line between here and here. What's this one? What the hell does that go into? Oh, it goes in the case where the fuel pump would normally live on a Type 1 engine. There's a fuel pump uh, bung right there. That's interesting. I don't know what that is. Some kind of vent. Maybe there's supposed to be a T. It's supposed to connect to these things. I'll have to... Uh, Actually, I guess it would be an X, a four-way. One, two, three, and four. Maybe that goes on there. Yeah, that's it. This probably goes to here, this one goes to here. That makes sense. That makes sense, okay. Well, that's gonna be in the way. Um, doing a lot of thinking out loud here. Checking our, what I think is the fuel pump over there. Which I thought was in the front of these vehicles, but it doesn't appear to be. <sighs> I'm gonna do a little digging inside of here, just checking everything out, making sure everything is connected as it should be. Everything else does look good. The charging system is hooked up, the coil is attached. Looks like we got our spark plug wires in. Yeah, it looks like they're probably in the right spots. Okay, I'm gonna trust this. All right, we're gonna hop I'm gonna right trust in this here. one. Whee! Oh man, I barely fit. Can't get my leg in. <laughs> seat needs to go way back. All right, we want to look at the dashboard here and look at our warning lights. Of course, I just locked the steering wheel like an idiot. All right, there's our warning lights down below. I'm gonna key on. All right, now we have power. Okay, good, the other battery was sucked down real bad. All right, now if I turn the key the rest of the way, it should start cranking and we want to make sure that oil light goes out. All right, something wrong with this key switch. There it goes. And the oil light went out. That was quick. Okay. Yeah, that gas pedal's stuck. I'm gonna shoot a little pee blaster on that. Fix that too before I continue because I don't need this thing revving up like crazy. And then trying to jump into the garage even though it's not in gear. And the e-brake is on, yeah, for whatever it's worth. We don't need to have an accident today. All right. And well, just for grins, if it's cranking and it has an oil light, let's juice it. All right, here we go. Well, that's a, that's a beginning. That's a start of something. You know, I don't hear a fuel pump kicking on anywhere. And I don't know what a Type 3 fuel pump even sounds like. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to locate it in here. I gotta check the instruction manual. I'm sure somebody already commented down below in the video. 
um, as to where to find it, but <laughs> by the time you guys have left the comment, think about it, I've uh, already found it. <laughs> Alright, well, let me have a look. I thought about it again because Ruby used to be fuel injected, and I actually had to correct all of the problems with the carburetor conversion that the previous owner's mechanic had done to it because he left the fuel injection fuel pump on it and that's located in the front axle beam up here let me show you guys what we're looking at down inside pull this button there we go all right in here is a uh, i don't know a bottom on a scutcheon that's what it is pull this thing out there's this void and uh, this nose on this later square back is much longer than that of Ruby's little delicate thing so I can't see the axle beam from here but I imagine the camera can and did you look at that there's our fuel pump all right I'm gonna turn the key on and we're gonna see if it makes any noise I might just see if I can prop the camera under here somehow uh, all right something like that Yep, it's making noise. Nope. <laughs> All right, up here we have the fuel pump. You can see the three outlets on it, or inlets. I'm not sure quite why there's three. I never researched the paths on how this stuff works. But it is unplugged right now, but when it's in, um, I don't hear it run or anything, but it does get a little warm after running for about a minute, or non-running for a minute. So it is getting power, but not much else. I have this other fuel pump here, which is also from a Volkswagen, but it's different. It doesn't have the same three outlets, or maybe it does. I don't know what the difference is between this one and that one. I don't even know if they're intercompatible, but it does have the same plug. And if I plug it in, it runs. So I'm having a problem with my fuel pump. It looks like it's dead. Now I have the other one, like I said, with three outlets on it. It's brand new in the box. I don't know where the hell it's at. I'm gonna have to look around. I have not seen that thing since around the time that I bought Ruby, because it came with Ruby as a spare. So, well, this is gonna have to come off of here. I'm gonna have to plug up these things because it's gonna gush gas out of it. And uh, there's a possibility I might be able to even open it up and just clean it. Sometimes they just need a little grease or something on the bearings, but I don't know, have no idea. But that's what's wrong. We're getting no fuel pressure because the uh, fuel pump does not run. <laughs> Simple as that. All right, well, I found a post online that showed me how to connect that one with that right angle bung on it as opposed to the three straight outs here that you see on this one. So that's hooked up, but real quickly I discovered what happens if you don't have a tight clamp. <laughs> it just kind of squirt out. And now way back in the rear there, you can also see a wet spot under the engine because apparently there's something else that's not tight. So let's go get a closer look at that and find out what it might be. Clinking fuel from the back. Didn't even know it was until I went and looked. But it's from this side of the engine. And a matter of fact, there it is, look at that off completely <laughs> so much for having been run previously huh anyway we'll fix that all right that line is reconnected I made sure I got my fire extinguisher within reach to give this thing a fire up it's right inside the garage door guys just over to the right and well, let's see what happens here we go <laughs> well you know what let's just check for leaks you can hear the fuel pump kicking on that's good Back here. I don't see anything squirting. The tone of the pump changed a little bit, so it probably built up pressure okay. I don't see it dripping. All right, well in that case, let's just turn that key, fire it up. Oh, of course the battery's crapping. All right, well. We got a solution for that too. All right, remember this wonderful battery jumper? This thing is awesome, guys. I've been using the crap out of it. It's an everyday tool for me. <laughs> All right, going back around. And we'll try again. Let's see if she starts. Huh. Oh, you know what? There's something else smart that I did earlier. That's stupid of me to not reconnect. I disconnected the points 
So I didn't accidentally fry them by leaving the ignition turned on while I was uh, working under the front. One of those things that people always do, they fry their points when they're just sitting in the car running the radio without the engine running. All right, cross your fingers. There it is. Oh my God, I don't believe it. That actually started easy. But I guess I primed the living shit out of it because I've been keying it so much here. Oh, hang on. Need to disconnect our charger. Pull that out. This kind of stuff. Don't need that getting in the engine. Put that air cleaner back on here. This does have an oil bath. You don't want to flip it over or turn it up on its side because it's just going to gush everywhere if you do. Get this boot back on here. This kind of presses into place. Put our little clamp back on. Oh, there's one back there that's impossible to reach. And thread in. And it only threads in if it's perfectly straight. There it is. I thought that was going to be real difficult to get in there. Put that back on. We're going to need a little vacuum from here to here. That does what it's supposed to do. Well, let's fire it up again, guys. Here we go. You guys get the front seat. Jason, here we go. You may have seen him at our tech sessions. <laughs> of course, I didn't rev it up quite so much because I'm not an idiot to rev up an engine that's cold and barely got any oil flowing through it yet. So, but man, that's good news. Turned out that was an actually an easy fix, just a bad fuel pump. As far as getting into the sensors and everything else on this car, I've got no clue. I'd have to check the manuals. Doesn't mean I can't do it. Just not anything that I've ever worked on before. The this thing runs, the louder the valves seem to be getting. When I stick my head in the engine compartment, yeah, I can hear the noises on the extreme ends of the engine. It's not from the crankcase. But that's the distinct clattering of not properly adjusted Volkswagen valves. That's something that can be easily gone through. Can't do it now though, because the engine's warm or warming. I won't get an accurate measurement on it, so it's one of those things that I'll do first thing in the morning. But uh, yeah, this is great news. <laughs> this is some really good news. It runs. It runs and it starts nice and easy too. It's a winner in my book. smoking a bit then that seems to have gone away probably just was the little bit of bad gas sitting in the lines but this since uh, flushed it through burned it up or whatever have you it's got about two gallons of uh, high octane in there right now and I only got some high octane because I needed to put it in the lawnmower not lawnmower the go-kart because the go-kart's got the milled head so I need a little bit of higher <laughs> octane fuel otherwise it pings and whatever's left goes into Z because the Z also likes high octane but anyway this uh this car I'd take it for a drive right now, but it doesn't have any brakes. There. Oh man, Duckman, you can't drive without brakes. 
This is one time that I'll actually listen to somebody telling me that. Yeah, I don't drive without brakes, guys. I mean, I guess there's an e-brake, but just no. <laughs> but again, watch this. You ready? First off, check our lights, make sure they're still doing what they're supposed to do, and they are. And then, it starts right up. I didn't even have to touch the throttle pedal, of course, because it is all fuel injected, which means it's semi-intelligent. The uh, fuel gauge doesn't seem to work. I mean, like I said, I put a couple gallons in there, but it should have come off the bottom. Just a little bit, but yeah, nothing, but the gas pedal was stuck. I've since freed that up. The travel on it seems a little short. I'll investigate to make sure it is opening up the throttle body all the way. But it feels like it's running on all four cylinders. It sure sounds like it. So I think we made some really good progress for today. So the answer to the question of does it run? Yes, it runs. It actually runs pretty good and I'm quite happy with it. This is gonna be a very exciting and fun project car to rebuild. Um, there's a lot more coming for this thing in the near future, so watch for it. I'll talk about my plans as to what we're gonna do coming up, but um, it's got a lot of rust damage, so there's gonna be a lot of cutting. I gotta cut deep, I got real deep on this one. <laughs> the good news is the floor pan's in the front area. Everything from the seats forward actually is pretty good, but the back seat area on both sides is pretty bad. So was Ruby. I had to cut all that out and replace it. I probably just could get a couple of um, uh, replacement floor pans and just do it that way but because I only need to repair like sections of it smaller sections of it I think I'll probably just put some you know washing machine metal in there I mean that's that's plenty adequate painting with some black paint nobody ever know Shh, right <laughs> throw some carpet over it well I guess it's gonna be it for today so leaky likey comment and subscribe don't forget to plug that dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video check out duck shit for all of my different social media links as well as my wish list that's right duck man has a wish list just like a cam girl <laughs> so if you want to see what I'm working on you want to see some of the things that are coming up in the future that's all that's on there it's not personal stuff this is stuff for my YouTube channel and if you wish to help me with some of my projects or some of the things that I have going on check it out guys the wish list up on uh, duckshit.net and uh, from there you also get to see a couple of spoilers as to what's coming up I don't generally like to give that stuff away I just like to show it but if you guys can help me with it I really appreciate it because I put a lot of money in this YouTube channel and that's what it's all about so thanks for watching once again and just for grins here we go you ready one more time <laughs> oh man she sounds good that's it We'll get them valves adjusted probably in the next video or the next couple videos somewhere. But get the brakes bled out. Maybe that'll be next. Then we can take her for a ride. Yeah, a little drive. How about that? Hey, the four ways just fell apart. Those aren't in there right. The headlights come on? One of them does. Yeah, I got one light on the right hand side. Gauges are lit up though, that's good. You have a turn signal? Nope. Do have high beam, low beam, but only on one side. Probably a bad ground on the left, I'll bet you. All right, well, we got a few things we need to fix. Hey, you know what, one more thing. No horn. Let's make sure it doesn't have to be running. No, nah, horn is dead. <laughs> make sure it is hooked up. Sometimes this wire falls out inside of here. Oh well, guess that's it for now. Thanks everyone for watching.